Hi everyone! Welcome to the computation of average turnaround time and average waiting time using shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm or the SRTF. Shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm is the preemptive version of shortest job first or SJF scheduling. When we say preemptive, the technique here is the CPU is allocated to the process for a limited time, meaning execution of a process can be interrupted or it can be stopped after a certain amount of time. So here, at the arrival of every process, the short-term scheduler schedules the process with the least remaining worst time among the list of available processes and the running process. And take note, once all the processes are available in the ready queue, no preemption will be done anymore and the algorithm will work as simple non-preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm. For us to be able to compute the average turnaround time, we need first to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process. And for us to be able to compute the average waiting time, we need first to compute the waiting time of each of our given process. But in order for us to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process, we need first to determine the completion time of each of our given process. So say for example, we are given here five process, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. And then we have here their arrival time. So the arrival time of P1 is 1, the arrival time of P2 is 2, the arrival time of P3 is 0, the arrival time of P4 is 4, the arrival time of P5 is 2. And of course, we also have here their corresponding worst time. So the worst time of P1 is 2, the worst time of P2 is 6, the worst time of P3 is 3, the worst time of P4 is 1, and the worst time of P5 is 4. Okay, so let us now create a gun chart for us to be able to see when a particular process gets the CPU time for its execution and when it finishes its execution. So this is our Gantt chart. So in the Gantt chart, we are going to start from time zero. At this unit of time, which is zero, we are going to check which process arrived in the ready queue. So we refer to our table. So in the table, we have here, one process and that is P3 which arrived in the ready queue at time zero. So as you can see, zero is its arrival time. Okay. So in the ready queue, we have here our ready queue at time zero, we have here P3. Okay. Since it is only P3 which is in the ready queue at time zero, we are going to allocate the CPU to P3. But instead of executing P3 for 3 units of time because its worst time is equivalent to 3, since this is shortest remaining time for scheduling algorithm, we are just going to execute P3 for 1 unit of time. So in the gun chart, we have here P3 and it will execute for one unit of time. So we add one to zero here. So we have here one. Okay, so the worst time now of P3 from three, it becomes two. Okay, then at this unit of time, which is one, we are going to check which process arrive in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table. Okay, so we have here P1, which arrive at time one. Okay, so in the ready queue, we have here 
P1. So in the radicule, we have P3 and P1 now at time 1. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do is we compare the worst time of P3 and P1. Okay, so we select which process has lower or smaller burst time since this is shortest remaining time for the scheduling algorithm. So the worst time of P1 is 2 and the worst time of P3 is 2. So they have the same burst time. Okay, because they have the same burst time to be able to break the tie, okay, we are going to apply the concept of first come first serve to P3 and P1. And based on the concept of first come first serve, okay, we are going to check which process has smaller or lower arrival time. So the arrival time of P1 is 1, the arrival time of P3 is 0. So therefore, P3 has smaller or lower arrival time. Okay, so therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU still to P3. So in the gun chart, we now have here P3. And okay, P3 will execute for, again, one unit of time. Okay, so... We're going to add 1, okay, to 1 here, so this is now 2. And the worst time of P3 from 2, it will be equivalent now to 1. Okay, at this unit of time, which is 2, we are going to check which process arrived in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table. At time 2, we have two process, which are P2 and P5, which arrive in the ready queue. Okay. So, in the ready queue, we have here P2 and P5. Okay. So, the content of the ready queue or the ready queue has P3, P1, P2, and P5 on it. Okay. So, we are now going to compare the worst time of this four and look for smallest burst time. Okay, so the burst time of P3 is 1, the burst time of P1 is 2, the burst time of P2 is 6, and the burst time of P5 is 4. Okay, so P3 has the smallest burst time because its burst time is 1. So therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU still to P3. So in the gun chart, we have here P3. And P3 will execute for one unit of time. So we add 1 to 2. We now have here 3. Okay? So P3 is already done with its execution. Okay? Next. At this unit of time, which is 3, we are going to check which process arrived in the ready queue. So we refer again to our gun chart. Okay, so there is no process which arrive in ready queue at time 3. Still, our ready queue has P1, P2, and P5 on it. So this time, we're going to compare the worst time of P1, P2, and P5 and check which process has the lowest or the smallest worst time. Okay, so the worst time of P1 is 2. The worst time of P2 is 6. The worst time of P5 is 4. Okay, so P1 has the smallest worst time. Okay, so therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P1. So in the gun chart, we now have here P1. And P1 will execute for one unit of time. Okay, so we add 1 to 3 here. So this is now 4. And then the worst time of P1 will become one now <clears throat> okay so at this unit of time which is four we are going to check which process arrive in the ready queue okay so we refer to our table so we have here people which arrive at time four so therefore okay 
we have here in the ready queue P1, P2, P5, and P4. Okay, at time 4. So, all of our process already arrived in the ready queue at time 4. Okay, so we are going to compare now the burst time of P1, P2, P5, and P4 and look for the smallest or the lowest burst time. So the burst time of P1 is 1, the burst time of P2 is 6, the burst time of P5 is 4, and the burst time of P4 is 1. Okay, so the smallest is 1. The smallest burst time is 1, and it is the burst time of both P1 and P4. Okay, so to be able to break the tie, again, we are going to apply the concept of first come, first serve to P1 and P4. Okay, so we're going to check now the arrival time of P1. Okay, the arrival time of P1 is 1, and the arrival time of P4 is Four. Okay, so P1 has lower arrival time or smaller arrival time than that of P4. So therefore, we're going to allocate the CPU to P1 still. Okay, so in the gun chart, we have here P1. And P1 will execute for one unit of time. So we add 1 to 4. We now have here P5. So P1 is already done with its execution. Okay. Since all of our process are already in the ready queue, okay, so according to here, this note, no preemption will be done anymore and the algorithm will work a simple non-preemptive SJF scheduling. Okay, so our ready queue has P2, P5, and P4. We are going to compare the worst time of P2, P5, and P4, and look for the smallest burst time. Okay, so the burst time of P2 is 6, the burst time of P5 is 4, and the burst time of P4 is 1. Okay, the smallest burst time is 1, it belongs to P4, so therefore we're going to allocate the CPU to P4. So in the gun chart, we have here P4, and it will execute for 1 unit of time since its burst time is one okay so we add five oh we add one to five so this now becomes six okay so we are done also with the execution of p4 okay then okay we only have here in the ready queue p2 and p5 okay the worst time of p2 is six the worst time of p5 is four so p5 has a smaller worst time than that of P2, so therefore in the gun chart, we now have here P5. So the CPU is to, to be allocated to P5 because it has smaller burst time than that of P2. Okay, so the burst time of P5 is 4, so we're going to add 4 to 6 here. So this now becomes 10. Okay, and finally, we allocate the CPU to P2. Okay, so by the way, P5 is already done also with its execution. Okay, so finally, we are going to allocate the CPU to P2. Okay, so we have here P2 in the gun chart. And the worst time of P2 is 6. So therefore, we add 6 to 10 here. So this now becomes 16. So we are done with our gun chart. Okay, all of our process has been executed already. Okay, so we are now ready to determine the completion time of each of our given process. So we start from the, getting the completion time of P1. So in the gun chart, we have here P1. This is its completion time, 5. And then P2, this is P2 in the gun chart. This is its completion time, 16. And then P3, so this is P3. This is its completion time, 3. P4 is here, so 6 is its completion time, and P5 is here, so 10 is its completion time. Okay, so we are now ready to compute for the turnaround time of each of our given process. So we start from computing the turnaround time of P1, okay? So the turnaround time is computed by using 
the formula completion time minus arrival time. So the turnaround time now of P1 is equivalent to the completion time minus the arrival time. So 5 minus 1, the turnaround time, therefore, of P1 is 4. Okay, the turnaround time of P2 is its completion time, which is 16, minus the arrival time, which is 2. So it's now equivalent to 14. The turnaround time of P3 is its completion time, which is 3, minus the arrival time, which is 0. So it is equivalent to 3. The turnaround time of P4 is its completion time, which is 6, minus the arrival time, which is 4. So the turnaround time of P4 is 2. And the turnaround time of P5 is its completion time, which is 10, minus its arrival time, which is 2. So therefore, the turnaround time of P5 is 8. Okay? So next, we compute for the waiting time of each of our given process using the formula turnaround time minus burst time. So we start from computing the waiting time of P1. Okay, so we have here 4 okay, minus 2. Okay, so the waiting time of P1 is 2. The waiting time of P2 is its turnaround time which is 14 minus the burst time which is 6. That is equivalent to 8. The waiting time of P3 is its turnaround time, which is 3, minus the worst time, which is 3. So it's equivalent to 0. The waiting time of P4 is 2, okay, because its turnaround time is 2 minus the worst time, which is 1. So it's equivalent to 1. And the waiting time of P5 is its turnaround time, which is 8, minus its worst time, which is 4. So the waiting time of P5 is 4. Okay, so since we are already done with computing the turnaround time and the waiting time of each of our given process, we can now compute the average turnaround time and average waiting time. Okay, so we start from computing the average turnaround time. So the average turnaround time is now equivalent to the turnaround time of P1, which is 4, plus the turnaround time of P2, which is 14, plus the turnaround time of P3, which is 3, plus the turnaround time of P4, which is 2, plus the turnaround time of P5, which is 8. Okay, so we add the 5 turnaround time and divide it by the number of process, which is 5. Okay, so 4 plus 14 plus 3 plus 2 plus 8 is equivalent to... 31 divided by 5, so our computed average turnaround time is 6.2. Then we proceed with computing the average waiting time. So the average waiting time is equivalent to the waiting time of P1, which is 2, plus the waiting time of P2, which is 8, plus the waiting time of P3, which is 0, plus the waiting time of P4, which is 1, plus the waiting time of P5, which is 4. So we add the 5 waiting time and divide it by the number of process, which is 5. Okay, so 2 plus 8 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4 is 15 divided by 5. So our computed average waiting time is 3. So these are now our computed average turnaround time and average waiting time using shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm or preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm.